The opera is called La Voix Man and it is a one act opera. It is by Francis Poulenc the music and libretto is by Jean Cocteau. The story is about a woman who has no name, has no age, and she is talking to invisible, inaudible lover. Conversation lasts about 45 minutes and he learns that she tried to commit suicide. It doesn't help that the Paris communication system, the telephone, is very poor in the beginning of the 20th century and the line is being cut, constantly interrupted by different people, the operator, which make her desperate and uh, which make her heartache unbearable. Yes, that's The memorizing of it is not very difficult. What is difficult and extremely satisfying is to, um, to work on the transition moments, the contrasts between the mood when she goes from one mood to another. And this is the most exciting part when learning it. So I spent a lot of time uh, by the mirror with the score, with words and with experimenting. Well, the Poulenc is really an extraordinary piece to work on uh, as a conductor, as an orchestra, as a musician. Um, I don't really know of any piece quite like it. Uh, on its surface, it seems to be a monologue for a soprano accompanied by an orchestra, but it's really much more than that. It's, it's really a conversation. You don't hear the other voice except in the music of the orchestra, which I think once you think about the piece a little bit, really clearly states what's going on on the other end of the line. Without your nourishment, and then start to fade away, this telephone that might become an instrument of torture, unable to bring respite or hope, but only anguish. It needs a lot of courage to bring it out onto the audience honestly, to be completely sincere to all the emotions and feelings, and just to trust that uh, um, the more simple, the more honest you are, the brave you are with your decisions, the audience would uh, be touched. And um, this is what is the most rewarding thing for me as an artist.
It really, I think, more than being about a pathetic woman uh, who is so hung up on, on this uh, one man in her life, or about a very weak and callous uh, other human being whom we never meet, it's more uh, about uh, people's desperate need to communicate in the modern world where people, even with all these new fangled methods of communication, as the phone is in this piece, and as uh, perhaps our cell phones are, and texts and Twitters, uh, about the feeling that even though we have all these means of staying in communication, we're more alone and more isolated than ever before. absolutely has that as well as obviously um, uh, extremely beautiful voice has this quality um, that I think of that the great Russian actors have you know which is this very uh, private inner world uh, which uh, is a riveting quality when you're sitting in an audience so you watch it and you become interested not just in the storyline but in the, the feelings and the deep ideas that this person is um, experiencing. Oh no, now I couldn't speak. I simply couldn't. I have not been well. When I said I took a Is, is a great challenge for all of us. It's, it's technically very difficult uh, for the orchestra, and on top of that, it's, it's extremely schizophrenic in its writing. It uh, never stays in the same feeling for more than four or five bars throughout this entire rather significant duration. It's always jumping around just as uh, well as the women's thoughts are, as the subtexts are, as the men's responses are, it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't settle into any one groove for a long time, which is, which is always a, a tricky kind of piece to put together. And on top of that, uh, it's being sensitive uh, to the person we're working with accompanying, the, uh, the singing actress, not just uh, from a point of view of uh, musical needs and breaths and phrasing and whatever, but also theatrically what it is that she's trying to get across and trying without words uh, to be able to uh, let the audience hear what it is that she's hearing on the other end of the phone. We played a lot with extending some of these pauses so all we get as an audience is watching a person dealing with silence and, and her anxiety of waiting for this telephone to ring, her anxiety of waiting for some company in a way. So some of them are filled with action when she takes some tablets or when she burns 
are leptons. Uh, but others are just waiting. Others are just this notion of somebody looking at a telephone and just hoping that somebody is going to call them. Originally, when uh, I met and started working with Ilona, it struck me as, well, this is odd. It's a, it's a French opera. Uh, she's singing it in, in English, but she has a very distinct accent in English. In fact, I found myself uh, correcting little bits of, 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 of English and what the, you know, what the, the proper syntax would be. Uh, but then I realized that, in a way, it plays perfectly into uh, the awkwardness that is at the heart of the opera. It is another layer of communicative difficulty. Uh, imagine, if you will, that this woman is not a native Parisian, that it is difficult for her to communicate in that language to some extent, that it's very difficult for her to open her heart in that language, or even to be understood. As we all know, it's much easier to talk a language you don't speak well in person than it is to do it over the phone. I think the, the telephone for me is one of the most dangerous uh, instruments I know of. Um, I personally totally dislike serious phone conversations. Uh, I, I think that it is so very hard to talk to somebody and uh, tell them what's in your heart and be able to sense what's in theirs uh, in this disconnected way of voices, even more so uh, in the modern age with cell phones, which seem to add another layer of artificiality onto it. I have to say there's been so many times in my own life where um, I have had a need to communicate with someone, uh, a loved one, uh, somebody whom I had an important or difficult uh, uh, matter to discuss with, and ended up feeling at the end of the conversation that we were further apart on the issue rather than closer on the issue. And uh, so I will, you know, uh, these days, of course, our modern lives are so busy, there's often no choice, but I will travel great distances to avoid having to have phone conversations. In a sense, it is quite healing to experience something like that, to try to understand uh, where it all can end and get out of it and not to be her. <laughs> so, so this is what I experience. And it is... Uh, uh, when, whenever I reach th this um, combination, when everything falls into the right place, and everything works and I'm completely devoted and loyal to every little detail in the text and in the music it is incredibly satisfying for me because it is almost as if one falls in love when you are you f when you feel as if you the time has stopped or the time is a slow motion and the world around you s continues spinning but you are in this moment and um, I think that this, this is one of the reasons why people are craving so much to come and see the opera and the art and music theater uh, because this is where time stops
one can imagine someone taking his heart out, squeezing it and pouring blood out, but then at the same moment being caressed and enveloped by something so warm and so beautiful. That is how I felt when I was singing.